these equations, expressions, functions. Some of these things is what I am typically going to cover here. So, starting off with uh, a quick understanding of the different uh, symbols and rules which we see in the world of uh, uh, basic uh, calculation, we always talk about the term variables. So, when I am talking about uh, 3x, then x is taking different values which is called as variable. Whereas 3 is called as a constant because it cannot change. But generally represented by alphabets, so the x typically denotes a variable, generally denoted in lowercase letters. And when I am combining, uh, com combining the different uh, variables and constants and typically uh, joining them using an addition or subtraction, that is what I am calling as an expression. So, here anything, this is called as one term which combines uh, some number of constants and uh, variables through a multiplication or even each of them in isolation. So, there are two terms in this expression. This two terms put together is called as an expression. So, a combination of different terms. Each one is a term. This is one term. This is one term. So, this is called as an expression which uses variables and constants. And now, if I say y, if I equate this to some variable y or sometimes we denote it as f of x, which means for different values of x, for different values of x, I should get a different output altogether. Right? For different values, I should get uh, a different output. But that doesn't mean that the output has to be entirely different. See, when I am putting x is minus 1, I can get y as 1. Even if I am putting x as 1, still I, I, I can get y as 1. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, this is not a function. Basically, the major uh, requirement of a function is for x equal to minus 1, I can't have two values. It can have either 1 or 2. Then it is not a function. So, for individual values of x, there need to be a unique value of y. Then we are calling it as a function. So, wherever we are pointing the output of an expression to another variable, we are calling it as a function. So, for each input, there should be only one output associated with the function. But inputs wise, if there are more number of inputs rather than only one, means instead of x, y, z, if there are three inputs to a particular function, we call those kind of functions as multivariate functions. For example, the volume of uh, a cuboid takes the length as one, one variable, breadth as one variable, height as one. So, uh, when I am taking all these three independent variables to compute the volume, that is what I am calling as a multivariate function. And in, in uh, not all the cases, all the variables can be allowed for x. In some cases, especially if I am defining a function called square root of x. Now, x cannot be all possible values. I can take square root of 20, I can take square root of 49, but I can't take square root of minus 25. So, the function... For, uh, for what values of the variable the function is really defined is called as the domain of that particular function. So, here I can say that a negative values are not included as a part of the domain of this function. Only non-negative, zero and positive values only are the components of the domain of this function f of x equal to square root of x. So, we have to clearly define for what values is this function really applicable to. 
and in general whenever we are representing a function of this form y equal to ax plus b we typically call it as a linear function because uh, x is having a degree of 1 but when i am taking it as ax squared plus bx plus c i call these kind of functions as quadratic functions because the second layer of x the second power of x is being considered so in this case y is called as a dependent variable x is the independent variable a and b are treated as constants whenever i have an expression of this form it is nothing but as good as i am taking x and y on the x axis and y axis i am trying to do a graph for different values of x, I am trying to plot the different values of y that are coming based on the constants a and b. What I typically see is this point will be 0, comma b, wherein it will be on the y-axis uh, corresponding to the point 0. And the slope of this particular line, by what extent the y is changing for one unit change in the x. If x is increased from 0 to 1, I see that this y would be increased from b to b plus 1. That is what is the meaning of the slope. So, we can very well plot the graph of y equal to ax plus b and it will generally be, it will be a straight line for all linear kind of functions. We find that it is a straight line. And the moment I am changing the A and B, I will get different kinds of lines. I can change A and B and I can get different kinds of graphs. Which means wherever though A and B are constant, they can take different possible values depending on the requirement. That is where we are calling them as parameters. The constant that can be changed to obtain different kinds of expressions and graphs are typically called as parameters. So here, when I use it as a parameter, when the data is changing, when the graph needs to be changed, A and B can get changed. A is called as the slope or the gradient and B is called as the intercept. We have already talked about it. Intercept is a point where the line cuts the y-axis. And slope is the sensitivity of how the y is changing when x is changing. The finance people typically call it as beta because generally this concept is typically used when they are trying to plot the risk, the systemic, uh, systematic risk of the security on the x-axis and the return on the y-axis the graph that comes out looks more or less the same. The slope of it is typically termed as beta. And when any expression is equated to some value and we are trying to solve it, that is what we call as the equation and the solving of the equation. So all these uh, basic terms need to be comfortable for us while doing any kind of numericals moving forward. And lots and lots of Greek letters are being used as a part of uh, different notations. Alpha generally used as the intercept for regression. Beta is used as a slope for regression. Gamma, delta, these are all option sensitivity kind of measures. We also have theta. We also have rho. All these are treated as sensitivities of the option. Means in the financial world, we are using lots of Greek letters which represent the sensitivity of the option with respect to the change in the underlying uh, assets price. Error is generally, when we are doing statistics and any kind of errors that are coming up, uh, especially the forecasting errors, any kind of random related variable or random related error we want to represent, we use the Greek letter epsilon for it. And generally uh, for uh, expected return, we use mu. 
for any kind of expected returns on the securities or portfolios we are using the letter mu to associate the degrees of freedom we are using the letter nu we also use a letter called vega which is also an option sensitivity measure the pi again uh, when we are talking about a capital pi it is typically uh, used as a multiplier a multiplication of few values we denote it by the capital letter pi whereas the small letter pi is a clear indication of a constant which is 22 by 7 similarly sigma we have a capital sigma which denotes summation a small sigma